Pushkar is a cool place, guys, but it's kind of a party place. And I don't really go out at night. I have walked around a bit out there just for fun. Vlogging ain't easy. Traveling's not free. Please like, share, subscribe, and buy a coffee. But every night, it's music, it's fireworks, and the music goes until like midnight. It starts at about 7 something p.m. and sometimes it goes really late. Like on a good night, it stops at 11.30 or midnight, usually midnight, but sometimes it goes till 3 a.m. or even later. I think there was one night when it was like 4 a.m. So, you know, I like quiet places, but this has been fun. I think I've extended for those two weeks on top of the four days I had. And I'd extend another two days on top just so I'm not traveling on the weekend. So that's going to be like a total of 20 days I'm here, uh, which is cool, like three weeks, I guess. Uh, but we're about to jump right into some Q&A here. Uh, I don't know where I'm going next yet. Uh, there was someone who asked a question before and I said I'd try to do an interview with that neighbor I had at the guest house who's that uh, female solo traveler from Slovakia. Uh, you saw a picture at the waterfall, that was her that was there I kind of just joined her group she had planned a, a visit there and I just kind of tagged along and got the ride even cheaper for everybody uh, but I asked her and she she honestly she thought the question was kind of ridiculous <laughs> to be honest this viewer asked a question about it being whether it's safe as a female traveler traveling in India when I asked uh, this woman about that she just said she acted like it the thought had never even occurred to her and honestly that's kind of my same impression of india like i've never had any concern at all about safety i just don't go to sketchy places like i know especially in a big city like delhi or somewhere i could screw around and end up in a bad neighborhood pretty easy there but i'm just not gonna do it it's about keeping your head on the swivel it's about sticking to nicer places I don't really like to go to the touristy spots but you can tell when you're getting into a sketchy neighborhood so it's the same as everywhere which brings me to my first question which is uh, not really a question but a comment I think someone felt like I was picking on Pushkar because I talked about the touts here uh, North India has a bad reputation for that but it's an earned reputation the thing is though it's everywhere where you go when you go anywhere with a lot of tourists, there's going to be an attraction for pickpockets. There's going to be an attraction for scammers and touts and all this stuff. And this person said, please make a video of NYC where every other person on the street tries to scam you. Waiting for that video. I guess uh, looks like from their name like they're an Indian person. And they thought I was picking on India. But the truth is, like I said, that's everywhere. I'm just making videos, calling the shots as I see them wherever I go. Like I told him, I'm not going to NYC anytime soon, but I agreed with him. Like, yeah, there's scam artists and pickpockets anywhere where there's a place for them to conduct their stuff. And places with tourists are certainly some of those places. Uh, way Deep Inside writes, As I know, I could have really taken a bad fall from that bull. Yeah, the bull hitting me, he didn't hit me that hard. He really just rubbed against me, but he rubbed against me in a way that, you know, a bull or a cow, their belly sticks out a lot on the side. So if they walk where their horns and stuff just barely pass you, their belly can push you over a full step to the side. So if I'd been really near the edge, like a bull's an immovable object. It's not like passing a person where you kind of nudge each other and you both move a bit. 
like a bull passes you like that, you're not going to make the bull move any. He's going to knock you off. So I'm quite aware of that. And I was always careful after that. And I even got my stick that I carry. Uh, that's the main reason I carry this is animals. Uh, there are a lot of monkeys here in Pushkar, but they're really chill. So I haven't uh, really had any sketchy encounters. The dogs are really cool here. And the cows, I gotta be careful walking with that stick because that's what people use here. As I've shown you in videos, they use a stick to get the cows away from their shop or their stand or cart. When the cow sees the stick, they can get a little spooked sometimes. So I gotta be careful how I walk with that stick going past them. So it may end up being counterproductive. He's asking me, have I been invited for a meal? Yes, I've been invited for a meal several times. So that kid Deepak, the gypsy kid, he, and it's interesting here, gypsies, when they say they're gypsies, they're like proud of being gypsies, but they're usually pretty young, the ones I meet. I've kind of had an impression that in other parts of the world, it's like looked down on or people are ashamed if someone thinks they're a gypsy. They want it to be known that they have a home. I think for people probably who have traveled for generations, that's important. But these folks I've talked to here, they're really proud of it. They're like, I'm a gypsy. And that's how Deepak was. But he in invited me to his gypsy village to uh, have dinner and spend the night there. There's always people, they don't just invite you for dinner, they invite you to come to their town and like stay there overnight. Like, come to my town, especially if it's somewhere some distance, they're like, come have food, you can stay the night at my house. Generally, I'm a, a pretty leery about these invitations. And it's kind of a shame because I could have some cool experiences, like especially going to a gypsy camp or something, that could be kind of cool. But you always got to be careful talking to people because it starts off seeming like it's friendly and then it ends up going somewhere like they're asking for something. So this other person invited me to their town. He's like, oh, come to my town, come have dinner at my house. You can stay there, spend the night, stay as long as you want. I say all this friendly stuff and I'm just being cautious. I'm like, oh, yeah, we'll see about that. And then he's like asking me to buy him a 2,000 rupee bag of flour. <laughs> so you always got to be careful. I don't think Deepak was being like this. It's really not my impression that he was. But honestly, I have not been able to tell the difference. Because they'll start off really seeming friendly and then it will take a turn. Have I enjoyed sharing a meal? Uh, well, I enjoyed sharing a meal in Mumbai when I visited my friends there. You hear the fireworks? That's another thing every night. What I found is really interesting, this place I like to go, I'll try to put a clip in a video soon about this place. Actually, I'm going to be having my food video, so I'll show some meals. There. But there's a place where I go and eat, and you can go upstairs and sit on the roof, and that's what every tourist I see go in there does this. But I always just sit on the bottom where the people are, the workers, and I talk to them. The kitchen's right there, and there's a few tables. And I sit down there and talk to them, and they suggest new foods. Like, I got to try muli paratha, which is, muli is like a, it's like a white turnip. I think they call it like a snow turnip or something. What's that called, those white ones? Um, they slice it up, and then they make a paratha out of that, which is like a stuffed bread. Um, methi paratha is another new one I tried. Uh, all kinds of things are suggesting to me just because I go there and I eat all kinds of the local food. So that's a cool experience. That's probably the closest I've had here to what to what Way Deep is asking about. Um, and yeah, being invited to share a meal would pretty much be like what I was just talking about. Would a national citizen care to inform us about living there and disclose and park what it is like? I'll have to see about that. People are a little self-conscious about their English a lot of times, even if their English is really good, I mean, perfectly understandable. They can be self-conscious about talking on camera. I felt like the girl from Slovakia was a little self-conscious maybe about having a video, so I never pushed it. I asked her once, she wasn't really interested, and I never asked her about it again. 
So that's why that never happened, like I was saying. Plus, I don't know what she really would have shared beyond what I already told you about the safety stuff. This is probably long enough for this Q&A. If you have any questions of your own, put them down below, and I'll see you in the next video.